into the agreed cost of treated water, let's say, or an annuity, whatever you, could, you do that. That said, I'd also maybe look at another model where you could look at captive generation of recycled water, in which case ownership ceases to be an issue because this is not a contract between the utility, it is a contract within a certain community, let's say, right. which okay. is entirely possible. Okay. Another question Professor Tare raised was uh, about uh, frameworks or guarantees required. Uh, so in this case, maybe we can just hear from Mr. Amanullah first and Mr. Majumdar. Uh, Mr. Amanullah, uh, is the framework pretty much there and the guarantees pretty much there? Uh, or, or what is missing there? Uh, I think the framework is uh, unfortunately not there yet. Um, you know, the model concession agreement that we need um, that has been done for the road sector for other sectors like 10 years ago, I think in the water sector um, or wastewater sector that has been uh, that has not been done. So you would you would prefer a standardized document? Uh, yeah, we would love to because we have five different um, you know contracts right now, and all five I mean you know all four uh, are different. I mean okay. so we have to really struggle between one and two, and so we don't have any you know a, um, a, a benchmark. Uh, so we would love to have a um, uh, documentation that comes out for the com uh, for the entire India. Okay, I see uh, Ms. Mukherjee shaking her head. Uh, I know these uh, MCAs have created a lot of issues in the past with roads, with ports, uh, right? It often starts with Mr. Haldia and then it goes to Mr. Chaturvedi in the end. <laughs> but, uh, any, any thoughts, Ms. Mukherjee? Uh, you know, the Planning Commission did come out with certain model concession agreements for the water sector. And um, the interesting thing is that you can't have a one-size-fits-all agreement for every contract. So each contract has to be designed differently depending upon the context. So, so therefore, I mean, a standard contract, I mean, yes, standard terms of contract, certain dispute resolution terms, yes. But I, I, I don't know if a standard contract will work. Yeah, I, the counter-argument from people is that these are small urban local bodies. They don't, can't afford the pricey lawyers and, you know, that Mr. Majumdar or Mr. Amanullah or Mr. <laughs> others can afford and therefore uh, there is a certain amount of capacity that isn't there. You know. Okay, uh, Mr. Majumdar, uh, quick thoughts in terms of framework or yeah. what is missing? There? Yes, uh, what's important is, see, uh, why should a private player invest? They want a, 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 an agreed return and they want their revenue uh, to earn. So that means a revenue mechanism which will give uh, the private player a guarantee of getting their payment throughout the concession period. What happens in other sectors, especially again, I will refer to power, we have done extensive work. That's escrow mechanism where uh, which account uh, right. from, uh, will come. If that is defined, I think that's the best model could work yeah, out. Where, where it has mostly worked yeah. for the most part. Uh, Mr. Amgani, any, any, any thoughts you have on this? I mean, uh, credit worthiness or need for payment security, or you think that issue is not gonna be there? I mean, that issue isn't there in the JNERM project, for example. Uh, I think the, the, the answer that we are looking at or the question we are addressing is, you know, is I'll bring it to the context back to the Ganga Action Plan that we are talking about, uh, how to manage water bodies. You know, we have an investment layout. What we are actually debating about is the capital efficiency and the water efficiency in that and how, how the private sector can play a role. So I don't think there are issues around, around those areas. It's actually um, how to take it forward from where, where, where we are, where somebody is willing to spend, right, and, and, and uh, willing to go after it. But what we are saying is how do we sustain that and there is a mechanism to be able to take forward that and, and, and really uh, go about doing it. Okay. Uh, we'll take three or four questions from the audience. Uh, they have to be brief. And they have to be addressed to a particular panelist, not to the entire panel, otherwise we can only have one question. Okay, so four questions addressed to a particular panelist, uh, otherwise they will be disallowed. And then after that, we'll have the final word from Professor Tare, who of course is the man behind this entire conference. And, and he'll tell us whether he is, whether this session has, he's gotten what he wanted from the session or not. Yes, please, we'll begin on the right side. Uh, okay. We'll begin on the right, right, and then we'll come to you, sir, as well. Yes, sir, and please do identify yourself as uh, well. I am VS Thren, Chief Engineer, Dirigal Board. There's a very good example of Singapore has done a good PPP project and they are very successful in especially sewage treatment and water reuse. Okay. For the last seven, eight years, they have done about 120 MGDs of what is being done right. through these PPP models and is very cheap also. Thank you. 
Thanks. Uh, just a bit of a plug. Our uh, company has a wholly owned subsidiary in Singapore called Global Infrastructure Monitor. We've just launched a magazine called Southeast Asia Infrastructure. And it so happens that we've talked about that there. So those of you who are interested, you can go to southeastinfra.com. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. Please uh, go ahead, a sir. A quick question to Ms. Mukherjee. Uh, uh, this is Rajiv Sinha from IIT Kanpur. Uh, you know, you talked about a very strong regulatory mechanism. Uh, agreed. Uh, but then uh, doesn't it add cost to the entire PPP model? And who bears that cost eventually? Um, you see, without a regulatory model, yes, it does add a cost to the, re uh, to the, uh, to the PPP model. And uh, my understanding is that, you know, when you cost water services or wastewater services, uh, and tariff setting would probably be a separate, totally different separate session by itself. I mean, we need to know what are our principles of tariff setting, okay? Are we building, uh, when, we, when we cost our water and waste, are we building in the environmental costs of not treating the wastewater? Are we building in the health costs to people? Are we building in the costs of lost hours of livelihood? So, so there are these social costs. So therefore, if there, are, there is a certain cost to the regu regulatory me mechanism, then there is, a, uh, I mean, an overall regulatory mechanism and a regulatory, you see, to build investor confidence, it is important to have a strong regulatory mechanism. Now, as I said, uh, private uh, participation is not a silver bullet. We have found that private operators can be as lax. So, Capacity constraints in the public sector hmm, hamper operation of plants, but also hamper regulation. So therefore, I mean, the short answer to that, yes, is that if there's a cost to regulation, then government should be willing to pay. The public authority should be willing to pay that. Okay. Uh, middle column. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello. Uh, I'm Vikram. My question is to from Ms. Mukherjee. From which organization? From Boruj, uh, Mumbai. My question is to Ms. Mukherjee. Uh, see, we are talking about PPP in wastewater uh, treatment. The other side of this uh, uh, is the water supply. We take water from uh, water bodies uh, like Ganga and when, uh, we treat it so that it is potable for dispatch. Uh, I think uh, Delhi Jal Board like other ULBs have been, uh, 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 has been executing a lot of PPPs on water supply. Uh, do you really see any learnings or any positives uh, when you involve these private partners in upgrading the infrastructure uh, in Thanks. India? Thank you. Yeah, yes, yeah, please. Sorry. Um, well, yes, uh, I think what we're seeing is that um, given the uh, right amount of, given clear contractual obligations, the involvement of the private sector in the water, uh, private sector in water sector, I mean, we've, we've had the Sonia Vikar treatment plant, we have the Bhagirathi treatment plant in private hands, and uh, our experience has been good. Go ahead, sir. This is Subramaniam from Everything About Water. I had two questions for Ms. Mukherjee based on what she was saying. She briefly touched upon it. One, when we talk of PPP in water, it's predominantly large centralized plants that we've spoken about. How about the decentralized model? Is there a lot to learn from there in terms of involving private players in decentralized smaller sewage treatment plants and running those? The second question was, you spoke about the fact that wastewater has value. Uh, and one element of that is the, the nutrient or the energy value that it has. Involving private players in that, do you, do you think that can make the projects more viable and sustainable? Questions? <laughs> Smaller uh, decentralized yeah. first. Yeah. Uh, centralized versus decentralized? Yes. Uh, we are, um, I mean, we've, uh, let, me, let me talk about Delhi. If you ask me as, uh, as a person, I think, it, I think I would be a very strong votary of decentralized treatment facilities uh, and local reuse. So that's something that I'd, I'm very strongly in favor of. Um, however, in Delhi, again, there were a couple of, I think, um, decentral, smaller decentralized treatment plants tried out under YAP2. Am I correct, Mr. Tin? YAP1. Uh, which did not succeed. 
And again, it brings me back to regulation. So we need to design decentralized treatment plants uh, smartly. It has to be cleverly done. Probably not single treatment plants, but if, you, if it's a project that you're, uh, that you're posing to an investor, then maybe a cluster model where you have the economies of scale to get in proper management and, and a certain level of investment. So we need to look at that. Um, again, internationally, I think the Malaysian decentralized model didn't work so well. So while in theory it's the right thing to do, it, it means you don't, have, uh, you, you don't have long sewerage systems, you can reuse your water legal, uh, locally. It actually needs much stronger regulation than your centralized treatment plants. So that's one. The other, um, sorry. I Nutrient forgot. value in... Uh... The waste, the energy value? Yeah. Right. Um, again, we're working with that. We have a collaboration with government of Sweden. Um, at our Okla treatment plant, there's energy being generated from, uh, from the gas, and that uh, partially runs the plant. The second model that we are looking at is actually not, not, um, uh, not generating energy, but supplying the gas directly as CNG in collaboration with IGL to Delhi Transport Corporation. So again, that is in the process of design, but we see that also as a viable mode. Okay. Uh, Professor Tare, do you have any questions for any of the panelists? No? Okay. Uh, so before, uh, so you have a question, that will be the last question. question yeah. If you can get the mic quickly. Oh, you have the mic. Great. Yeah, please, sir. Yeah, identify yourself, uh, please. Yeah, hi. I'm Sumit from Tahal, India. Uh, this, my question is also to Ms. Mukherjee, because you come from a government body. For example, if DJP happens to get into a large BOT project, uh, what is the probability or likelihood, if need be, you can get a state government guarantee from Delhi. Is some kind of a discussion happening internally to make a project bankable or something of that sort? Thanks. Um, we can get a guarantee, but uh, there is a bit of a problem here in terms of, um, in, in terms of our um, strange status as a quasi-state. Um, we, have, we have certain problems, although with the JICA project that is coming up for the rehabilitation of the Chandraval uh, water treatment plant and its command area, we, uh, Government of India has agreed for back-to-back -back guarantees based on the state government's uh, commitment to meet the, um, uh, to meet the, uh, the obligations. Okay. Uh, so before I hand it over back to Professor Tari, uh, thanks and, and, and a big hand for uh, Mr. Yambagni, Ms. Mukherjee, Mr. Amanullah, and Mr. Majumdar. <laughs> and Professor Tari, it's all yours. Thank you. Um, you asked me a question whether you're satisfied with this. I, I would say I'm extremely satisfied. And okay. one single reason for this is the presence of Ms. <laughs> the Vesri, right? It is very rare that a government official or people from the government talk so openly on such issues. I'm extremely happy and the way the discussion has gone. In fact, I, I wish in all such sessions this kind of thing happens so that we really get the uh, feedback. So I'm really thankful to you. I mean, it's only because of you that the discussion was so lively. And of course, the, the other people <laughs> uh, did contribute and uh, great contributions. Uh, before I close, uh, um, I would like to just say, uh, yes, we don't want to have PPPs open-ended, so regulations, as uh, has been said, is, is very important. And um, the other last question uh, was a guarantee. In fact, we are envisaging in our uh, recommendations that the state government and the central government, uh, through the funding that comes, gives the guarantee. Okay, only then probably there will be some, you know, uh, way forward in establishing the PPP models. Uh, 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 with all that, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Brar for very very <laughs> nicely conducting the session. Uh, I just have a, uh, one announcement. I know it has been a very long day, but I would like to request another 45 minutes for, of you. Uh, we are going to have a very, very special session on establishing water innovation centers in India. Uh, we have great people coming in. The session chair is Mr. Amitabh Kant, um, and then uh, uh, we have the panelists, Mr. N.